Hello everyone and thank you so much for visiting this video. My name is Ramnath and I'm a director for products and solutions at Fortinet, responsible for SASE. Today, as part of this demo, I'll be showing how easy it is to expand a customer's environment who have Fortinet Secure SD-WAN and integrate 40 SASE into the mix. As you look at the topology here, you can see on your right, there is a simple SD-WAN network with a couple of branch sites and a data center. All of these sites are enabled with Fortinet Secure SD-WAN, which is just a feature norm without any additional license requirement. There is also a web server that I've hosted behind AWS, which is accessible through two data centers, one Northern California and one Northern Virginia. Now, if you look at 4D SASE, we do have remote users. And these remote users are connecting to the nearest SASE point of presence, leveraging GOIP and latency. Once these users are connected, in order for these users to access the resources within private data center, we do have the ability to connect using SD-WAN. So when you connect 4D SASE into Fortinet Secure SD-WAN, we have the ability to ensure application resiliency even for the remote users accessing the private applications. In this demo, I'll show you how easy it is to configure that line which I'm referring to secure private access as well as zero trust security posture to connect the 40 SASE environment with 40 net SD WAN environment. Now let's hop on into the demo. Majorly, as I mentioned, there are two things that would be required. One would be the BGP configurations and the other is IPsec configurations. But in the beginning, whatever I'm showing here is what the customers typically would already have in their environment. Since they already have SD WAN up and running, the configuration that I'm showing you for the 40 gate, uh, within the 40 gate VM here, acting as an SD WAN hub, Typically, those configurations are already available. So the customer would not have to repeat them. But just for the sake of uh, understanding, I'm showing you what configurations and customer would require from SD-WAN to configure their 40 gate as a SD-WAN hub. So first thing what I do is I go into IPsec wizard, I define the VPN setup, provide a name, and then I go into authentication, provide the incoming interface, which is port one for me. And then I provide pre shared Pre-shared key is very important because this has to match what you configure on your 4D SASE console. Then you provide the tunnel IP, the remote IP net mask, and then you provide the local AS number. This is a BGP local AS number, which again has to match what you configure on your 4D SASE console. Then you define the local subnets, you provide the tunnel IP, and then you pretty much review the settings. Once you're done with this, you then go back to IPsec tunnels. And this is where you would verify your tunnels are up or not. Once you do that, you go into the network tab, into the interfaces, and then verify that the loopback interface is available or not. If not, you'll have to configure this. Then I go into my BGP configurations and then verify the local AS number, the neighbor ranges are well-defined and configured. Then let me go into the console of that 40 gate acting as an SD-WAN hub. And here I am checking the VPN IPsec interface configuration that's already existing on that 40 gate. Here, as you see from the CLI, there are multiple different a command line configurations that are running there, like Ike version two. There are a few commands that you'll have to configure from the CLI itself. I verify that the network ID is one. That's very important because network ID is something that you reference back in 4D SASE console. And then again, the subnet that you use for IPv4, the 10.201.1.0 is something which is very important because that subnet is something you refer back in 4D SASE console as part of BGP peer IP. Now I look at the phase two interface for VPN, and then I see uh, the encryption and integrity check configured. Once I verify all this, I go back to my 4D SASE console. So typically the customer's configuration journey begins from here for an existing SD-WAN customer. I go into the network tab, I go into secure private access, and I go into network config. This is where I configure all the BGP settings. As you see, there are minimal configuration knobs that are required. Only three parameters are required here, as you see. The 
and I'm going to service connections and this is where I configure my IPsec tunnel. As I edit on the existing uh, tunnel, you can see the remote gateway, BGP pure IP, which is again the subnet I refer to, and the network overlay ID, which is one, as I mentioned before, which is configured on the FortiGate hub. As I go and verify the configuration here, you can see uh, that you can then prioritize which data center you want to be assigned as P1 and which as P2. And that can be changed depending on your security SASE path. So you provide lots of granularity when it comes to defining your priority order. Now, as you see here, all these tunnels are up from individual SASE pops. You can see the health, latency, jitter, packet loss values per connection. Now, as I look at a single connection between the San Jose pop to my primary data center, I can see all of these BGP learn routes. Now let's see what happens when I connect an end user through 40 SAS. So this is an endpoint that's connected and I'm trying to access an internet website. Yes, I do have internet connectivity for this endpoint. Now let's see if I have access to a private resource running on AWS. So I have a web server running on AWS. So let's see if I have access to that. No, I don't. So let's confirm if this endpoint is connected to 40 SASE or not through 40 client. So let me open 40 client. And as, as you see here, I, I do see zero trust telemetry shown as connected, but remote access is not. So let me connect this client to 40 SASE through VPN. As I can see on the bottom right, yes, I do see the connection is established to secure internet access. And now as I enable this URL again, I should have connectivity because I do get, yes, as, as you can see here, I do have connectivity going through the Northern California, which is my primary data center. Now what I'm doing here is I'm going to add 300 milliseconds of latency for that path between the San Jose pop to the primary data center. Now let's see what happens when the latency suddenly shoots up. As I again refresh this link, let's see if it uses the same primary data center or not. No, as you can see, it uses the secondary data center, which is not Virginia, AWS data center. Because latency went up, the traffic got steered to the backup data center. As you can see here, the latency value is way high, which is about 300 milliseconds for the primary data center. Now let's stop this. Now I'll stop this. So the latency goes back to the normal values. And as I refresh my web, web link, you see the traffic gets back to the primary data center. So, so the convergence is pretty fast, thanks to ASD WAN convergence in the back. Now, as I go back to the health check and see, I see that the tunnel is back to three milliseconds, which is way about 300. And then for the backup, it's showing about 70 plus milliseconds. And that's why the traffic is routed through the primary data center and not the back. Now, let me go into the logs and verify what blocks are shown. As I go into private access traffic, and then I filter by the user that's sending the traffic. I can see that uh, the user is sending traffic to a destination IP, and then it's showing application as HTTP web browser. And I scroll down, I can see where the traffic is going. It's hitting the SPA policy, and it's hitting the SD-WAN rules as shown over here. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this video was informative in terms of how easy it is to integrate Fortinet SD-WAN with Forty Sassy. For more information, go to fortinet.com slash products slash sassy. Thank you.